Welcome to Magic Spiral. I'm Landon Balk. Today I'd like to discuss and share with you how I recorded an album entirely using the Boss BR1180. Let's unbox this thing. So here's the box. We get a user manual, a proprietary power supply, nice, a VHS? Well, let's plug this guy in. How does it connect to Wi-Fi? Here it is, the BR1180 Digital Recording Studio made by Boss circa 2002. Sporting two inputs, a built-in hard drive, and a CD burner. This recorder was a dream come true for many like myself who couldn't afford the expensive alternatives. Computer technology at that time still hadn't quite caught up to the consumer market, and the alternative for achieving high-quality recordings were self-contained digital recording studios. I walked into Guitar Center with a budget of $400. I told the sales clerk that I wanted a multi-track recorder with a built-in CD burner. What they had was a used BR-1180, and I was so excited I took it home and began recording immediately. This is like stepping through a time machine for me. I can just see the endless hours I've spent hunched over this box creating track after track. One thing that I've always wanted to do was make an album where all of the songs blend together seamlessly. How do they do that? Then I discovered the CD track feature. I experimented with this in full effect by making a bloated 76 minute long comedy album that simulated scrolling through radio stations. It was a personal success. We now interrupt this program for a special broadcast report from the planet Valendemar. We are the evil duck race. You must Sometime after that project, I had an epiphany. I saw how the album I really wanted to make could be done. It was actually possible. This, for better or worse, led to nine months of surrendering to a meticulous labor of love that I called Death of the American Dream. There was no going back. The problem with recording in a linear fashion is the entire album has to be recorded in sequence from start to finish as if it were one song. This means parking the mix settings before we start tracking. We can see on the front panel that we have 8 tracks. 9 and 10 is dedicated as a stereo bounce track. In this window we can view the pan settings. Tracks 1 and 2 are mono, tracks 3 and 4 are half panned, tracks 5 and 6 and 7 and 8 are paired stereo tracks. There's also fixed settings on each track for EQ and loop effects. This is a very calculated process that requires a lot of thought and foresight. I'm sure this sounds both cringeworthy and daunting for those who have mixed an album before, but one must find a solution and carry on. To remedy these limitations, I had three solutions. The first is the input effects that allow for each track to have its own effect printed on the way in. Second, getting the volumes right before recording. And finally, adjusting the mix settings by performing a live mix.
The instruments recorded on the tracks often change from one thing to the next. Take a listen and watch as the drums end on track 7-8, while the organ on tracks 5-6 changes to drums. This was done so that the sounds could overlap each other. Though the organ gets cut off early, the drums are seamless. This is one of many arrangement ideas written as a way to tie songs and tracks together. Here's an example of an organ during the verse turning into a piano for the chorus. Once the songs are recorded, you can insert a marker on the exact spot where one song ends and another begins. These markers can act as CD tracks, and when your project is finished, you can burn a CD with all of the songs separated where the markers were placed. This feature was a selling point for the BR-1180, however, I have yet to find a way to copy a finished song or track from one project and paste it where I would like in the timeline within another project. So we have all of the songs complete in the order that they go, and we have used all eight tracks as backing and rhythm tracks, but now we need to make room for more. This means it's time to perform the premix in real time. Notes are crucial for mixing cues. This album is an hour long, and that's exactly what the mix will take. This stereo premix will be recorded to tracks 9 and 10, and this process is also known as a bounce. V tracks, or virtual tracks, are essentially tiers of tracks beyond the 10 supplied. Think of them as additional layers. In the case of the BR-1180, you get 8 layers, effectively making it an 80 track recorder. For this project, I only used one layer, which makes 16 tracks if you don't count the bounce tracks. Once the premix is parked, it's time for lead instruments and vocals to be recorded. The stereo bounce track has been moved from track 9-10 to track 7-8 on the next V track layer. This was done with the track copy and paste function found in the utility menu. With this new V-Track layer comes fresh global settings for pan, EQ, and effects. Now the process repeats itself. A final mix is then performed and recorded to the mastering track on 9 and 10. Mastering tools are used, such as EQ and compression, and finally the stereo mix from tracks 9 and 10 can be burned to a CD. No USB on this guy, so the CD will have to be imported into a computer. I used iTunes. This project was a statement that I felt I had to get out. The album, called Death of the American Dream, is still available everywhere, including iTunes and Spotify. The finished product itself stands as a testament to whatever inspired me enough to go through all that trouble. Along the way, the undo button stopped working, among many other setbacks I had, but the BR-1180 never lagged or froze. Quite a surprise because I put the thing through its paces with such a large project. Overall, this machine was inspiring to use and paved a lot of way for me in my own recordings. Would I do another project this way? Nah. Though I still use hardware as part of my recording process, I still digitize those tracks and work within the computer. 
It's been a fun ride, and I'm glad I granted myself the experience. So there it is, the Boss BR-1180 and the death of the American dream. As you can see, a lot went into the making of this album. I hope this video has given you some tools and some ideas to use in your own projects. Stick around because we got a lot more stuff coming. Thanks for watching.